I was raised in the Bronx. My folks split when I was in my teens, and I split time between um, Manhattan, 53rd Street, and Westchester, Yorktown Heights. Uh, my current town is Maplewood, New Jersey, which is about 30 minutes out of the city, a little bucolic little town, uh, populated mostly by people from the Upper West Side and from Park Slope, where people go to uh, raise grass and children. I'm currently working on a sister piece to Bitch, which is called Jamie Towers. And Jamie Towers uh, is essentially a story about a family that um, needs to do some dirty business uh, on some grounds where a, a uh, project is being built, the Jamie Towers project uh, in the Bronx on Castleville Avenue. And I won't give away too much of the story, but they need to. Uh, you need to reclaim something that's in the dirt there. I don't know that there's any uh, specific event that informs who I am as a writer, but I will say that everything I write is, is somehow uh, linked to my childhood and my upcoming um, you know, characters that I was raised with in, uh, on Castle Avenue, all sort of intersect in all of my stories. So it's hard to say if there's any one particular event that um, informs what I do, but um, everything that I did growing up is somehow uh, shaped in my work. I mean, the one thing I would change uh, about theater, for me, theater is almost always too long, particularly plays. I would, I would issue summons to producers who, who uh, have shows that exceed an hour and a half. So, and I would also reward those producers who uh, put a play together and stage it for, uh, you know, without an intermission and for 90 minutes total runtime. Um, I, I don't necessarily, I mean, I have so many theatrical heroes. I don't have one in particular. Um, there are certain, there are certain, there are certain types of theater that I, that I like. I mean, if I were to speak about, um, you know, the angry young men of the 50s, you know, John Osborne, and, uh, that, he's definitely an uh, inspiration to me. Um, obviously, if you read my, my work, you can tell that I probably read a lot of Gurgis. Um, I like In Your Face theater, you know, the Sarah, uh, Sarah Kane um, sort of stuff. And, um, Britain in the 90s. For the most part, uh, if I were to list some of the people that are important to me, I'd say that um, um, obviously, as I said, uh, Gurgis, I'd say um, Osborne, David Mamet was a very big role in my education as a playwright. Um, and uh, I'd say that Anthony Nielsen. I love a lot of Scottish uh, playwrights, Anthony Nielsen, and uh, um, writers uh, from you know Ireland and from Britain, and for the most part, my heroes. Uh, currently, a lot of the work coming out of uh, National and Bush Theatre, um, appeal to leave uh, Fish Handle, that kind of work. I would say that I'm more inspired by novelists than playwrights. Um, but, you know. I don't know what it is. I, there isn't a lot of theater that appeals to me. Um, there are handfuls of people that I've read that I like and haven't necessarily seen all their work um, staged. But novelists, um, being sort of a, I was always sort of a shut in, uh, always read when I was a kid. And um, so, you know, the Hubert Selby's and the Nelson uh, Algren's of the world, for me, you know, John Fonte, a lot of these writers who were inspired by uh, Pope and uh, Noir are, are writers that I like. To, to me, the most exciting theater is the most personal theater. Um, to me, it's uh, the most honest and um, vital feeling. I, I, I don't care much for musicals as a, as a, as a, as a whole. Um, I like plays, I like people who have um, some, some sense of honesty and want to put it up on stage. And 
so if you have, for the most part, um, simple theater is, is uh, something that appeals to me. I love black box theater. I like being able to create uh, a story from almost nothing, just to sell performances. To me, that's the most, uh, that's the most uh, inspiring theater. You know, we, we've discussed this before, you and I. Uh, one of the things I would recommend young playwrights do is uh, don't, don't, don't give up their day job. Unfortunately, this is not a business where you can make a lot of money. And if you're lucky, you get a cop out of it. But, um, so I think that you know, young writers have to be mindful of that, recognize that. They're going to have to plug away for a long time before they, before they actually um, see any rewards from, from writing. Um, you know, there are, there are examples of people who, who were successful very early on, but, you know, you know, that's sort of a minority. I would also recommend that young playwrights learn something about structure. You know, without structure, you're just a kid in the room writing. Um, I, I know that is the case with me. I, I struggled for a long time just writing, 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 not really necessarily, necessarily knowing anything about form. And uh, through the help of a mentor that I had, was a writer for learn something about structure, form, and the significance of, you know, structure and acts and big moments and epiphanies and plot points. And uh, so to so learn a little bit about that is I have an uncle who, who sadly uh, passed away a couple years ago, who uh, when I was, I think it was summer or when I was in seventh grade, we get those recommended reading lists from your, uh, your teachers and he kind of threw it aside and went to his bookshelf and pulled out you know, Herman Melville and pulled out um, you know, Jack Kerouac and uh, introduced me to Beats, introduced me to a lot of different literature that I might not normally have uh, you know, come in contact with in school. So yeah, he was a very, very important figure for me. Um, my process for writing a play is, I, I, I probably, it probably isn't one that professors tell you to follow. For me, I don't have a story until I have a title. It's a weird thing, and I know that they tell you otherwise in, in a lot of writing classes, creative writing classes, um, that usually your title will come out of your story. And for me, I, you know, theater and film is such a packaged entity that um, I need to have the bow on it before I actually have a sense for what it is. So I have an idea for what I want to write. I'll focus, I want to focus on a certain, certain subject matter. And when I come up with a title for it, when I have an opening, when I have a uh, first term at the end of the first act, when I have an epiphany sort of near the last third of, of the play and then an ending, I have it. So it's just essentially a paradigm, a straight line from beginning to end, just bullets, I uh, have my story. I, I don't like to do any uh, treatment writing. For me, it's kind of a, a cheat when I write a, a treatment. I end up writing too much detail, and there isn't anything organic while I'm writing. I, I, there are no revelations that occur in my writing if I know too much what happens. I like for it to happen so organically. 